Welcome back to 320. This week is Patterns Guided. Uh, there's probably going to be a couple of videos here. Uh, this can be quite long and involved. as uh, a lot kind of fiddly steps, uh, even though we're trying to be efficient. You can see here Colin has supplied some bodies already made, uh, their surfaces. And it's gapped. Seems like something's going on here. There's two sketches. Let's see. So let's hide the bodies, have a look at the profile. No, the layout. Interesting. Seems routine. Some sizes here. Let's edit this guy. If I can find the button. Uh, so a lot of mirroring going on here. It seems fairly routine. This diameter is strange though. The only way to get rid of this I found is to actually delete it. Uh, I can press dimension, put a new dimension in here. Uh, I just practice this, so I know there's some parameters here. One of them is called width. Look in a second here. It is 44. It's the only way to get rid of this diameter. What's going on? Strange. Whatever. D again. And just replace that. This is an actual diameter. This isn't. So sometimes you get these sort of, this is a kind of a mix of an old file and a new file. So these are old dimensions. So just tidying up here. Everyone's back to constraint. It's good. Let's see here are the parameters. Yeah, I've got blade width, blade thickness. Holder thickness. We're going to be adding to this as we go along. There's already some stuff in here, the, the sketches essentially, and the extrudes. Let's have a look at these extrudes. Oh, they're already using the width of the blade, which comes out to 44. Perfect. Let's have a look at what we're aiming at here. This is what we're trying to model. Um, it's quite a lot of work uh, coming up here, split it up into multiples plan here is to try and get this waviness first uh, or sorry thicken up these plates that's why we have um uh, you can see what's going on in this one so we have our width uh, thicknesses and all the rest uh, so we're going to be using those for our holder and the blade so we'll do this last up here we're going to concentrate on this and first, we'll be doing quite a bit of fiddling with the history. So let's finish that sketch. Let's have a look at the profile. Seems fairly straightforward. Uh, these are projections. So no problem there. And what's it projecting off of uh, the layout? You can see here there's an offset between these two guys. This is where we're going to want our thicknesses to join up and it looks like Colin's aiming at a midpoint extrusion or thicken so let's do that so let's get started we can uh excuse me uh, just see what we've got here it's got our bodies we'll just hide the sketches for a second let's thicken this up first so thicken I'll start with the back here. Um, if you have chain selection turned on, which I don't right now, it should just pick the whole set of surfaces and go for symmetric. Now this is a little uh, not clear. I'm going to make a new component here as well. Uh, I'm just setting up the structure of my assembly here. It's not clear that the thickness is actually double. So if I type in here, this is the holder. So the thickness of the holder and just try OK. It's two millimeters. So what we need to do is fix that. So it's actually the thickness of the holder symmetrically both ways. So divide by two. Perfect. Can do the same. Uh, we've done some stuff in between. So let's do another thicken. And this time we'll go for this guy. And this time it's the blade divided by two. Now, 
one of the problems we're going to run into here is we're just setting this up. This is not, we need to get this a little bit sorted out first. The tendency here is to go ahead here and start using this sketch to trim this up. Uh, the problem we're going to run into is that we need to ripple this front surface. So if we look at that, we can see it's rippled. It's going to be a lot of work coming up to get that done. So what we need to do is keep this in the back in our pocket and we'll just leave this uh, up here as a, in our, you know, hist stored in our history. I see I've made a mistake here. Sorry. I'm going to undo. I didn't make a component. Let's wrap them up. New component. And this time we've got blade thickness divided by two. Symmetric. That looks better. Make sure we've got a touching. And this overlap is the part that uh, actually does stick out the back. So what we're going to do here is use this stuff uh, in history. So we'll be doing a fair amount of history uh, modeling here. Uh, I like to put components being made together. So you can try dragging it around. There we go. So we can put them, create those two components in order. So we've got primary secondaries running nicely. The problem is, like I was just saying, we can't really use these uh, sketches to trim this shape. So one thing we can do though, is actually trim these surfaces. So let's roll our history back to just after that. So we can roll our history marker to there. Our bodies may disappear because they were absorbed by some features. Have a look at our sketch. So what I'd like to do is thicken just a piece of this. This will give us a much more optimized object, easier to manage later. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's go and split this top one. So look for split, split body, split face. Let's try split in the face. Extend the split, split in tool. So let's try this here. So this is what we want to so split. I uh, want, maybe, will it? Split and tool. So we see here that it's not letting us pick the other side here. Maybe if we went from the other side, it might work. Right, so it's trying. It's getting stuck though. It's getting stuck where this circle joins onto that line. Let's go back and modify our sketch. So sometimes we do need to break this. So break, break. Little X's will show where it's going to break. Give us a warning. Say okay. Now if I constructionify that by pressing X, you can see here we've got a constant uh, edge now. Maybe this will be better for our Split. So let's try again. Split. Let's try the split bodies. Split the face. So I'm just trying some stuff out here. Can we pick more? Can we do more stuff? Split all those faces. Seems to be right. Nice. Try that. Yeah, perfect. So that's nice. What if we just go to the end of our history to make sure everything works? Uh, so because of what we were doing before, the thicken is failing. Again, my advice is never to delete these unless we must. So let's try editing this. I'll go back and just isolate this one and say, okay, so it's a little stuck. See if we can maybe unselect some stuff here. Maybe it's easier to just pick these all. And we notice what's going on here. <laughs> the chain select is maybe screwing things up. So let's try this. Nope, 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 nope. Sickness. 
Uh, hold a sec. It's kind of working. Let's see if we can get these other guys here. I'm uh, holding down command or control here. Nice. And it's double thick again. I lost my thickness. I'll just divide by two. That looks good. And it's going to it's go into a new body here because we've already done that. Let it work away for a bit. So our component is already made. We can see we're in the component. Let's go back out here. Now, be a bit more thorough with this one. How does it work? Let's X the selection. I've got this chain select, so I don't want that. There we go. Thick blade divided by two, new body symmetric. Okay. Nice. That's good. So now we've got our shape and it's controlled by a sketch. But we're able to split the whole thing in one pass or across the two surface bodies. That's quite nice. So our profiles are in the middle of our parts. So if we wanted to convert this over to sheet metal, we could. Uh, but next, how do we get this guy sorted here? Now, one of the big advantages of using Thicken is we can modify these extrudes. Now, if you look at the real part uh, for us to stand in as this model, from here to the end of the tooth is about five millimeters. So what we're gonna do is change what we're working on here. We'll slide this back five, and then we'll put the ripple in in the last five millimeters. Perfect. So how do we do that? What's driving? The correct bodies so let's see that's not that one body two there it is that's coming off this profile sketch let's modify the profile i don't want to lose this 60. i might be able to use the end of it perhaps but how do i split this line easiest way is to actually add a line just gonna put that vertical stuck on there, turn it in, into construction, and maybe just to keep it all organized, line this end up with missed it. Line this end up with this top edge. Still not completely done here. Dimension. Move it back five. Perfect. But can't select this so. Maybe we can use do a break again. So break. Oh, nice. Gives me a warning saying some constraints were shifted. Let's see if that changes anything. That looks good. Now, can I get this and change it? So I'm gonna try double clicking. There we go. Because I split the line, it usually just tends to go with one end or the other this time it's picked correctly nicely so now we say okay and we've got this end removed see the layout sticking beyond nice so we're doing well five millimeters trimmed off i need to replace this with this corrugated part let's go ahead and do that uh, no matter how i wiggle i can do uh, 3D sketches here, but this is not the time. It's already quite a complicated sketch, so it's time for a new sketch. Um, it's more or less up to you how you want to get your new plane. I want it at the end here. Uh, my preference is uh, plane along path. Pick a path, and I'll kind of arrange it sometimes in the middle of the open spot or whatever it is. Uh, you can change it from proportional to actual measured, zero. Uh, proportional is still zero, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I prefer this, don't know why. It's kind of nice. It also works on any sort of edge, so I can put it anywhere in here. A general approach. Say OK. If you want to reshape, we should reshape this, you can. Grab the ends, they kind of appear as you reach for them. Looks okay. I've put it in the wrong spot though. It's at the top level. That's all fine. 
let's move it all the way over. How far can I get? All the way. So I can make that. It's driven by the layout. Let's go ahead here and insert a sketch on this. Um, I want it to be before these. So let's go ahead here and roll the history back. And great sketch. Uh, let's project some stuff here. This is going to be a little complicated. Um, it's unavoidable. I'm going to project the end of that guy there. Uh, let's not use that one. How about this one? I had that other sketch. I'm going to give it a name. I call this the wave profile. Draw a rectangle. We'll use the rectangle to control our sketch. Uh, we do need to align it though. First, let's make it construction. It's not going to contribute any geometry, it's just a alignment. And we can, for example, want it to be symmetrical around this line. Um, I have a point here. Conic curve is coming up. So if you want a point, put one in the middle, snap it to the midpoint, and put it vertically above the origin. Check your shape. Looks good. Getting the behavior we want. Uh, again, as a stand-in, let's have a look at our other part here. So looking from underneath, there's one, two, three, four, five high points, three low points in the middle at the ends. It's not very obvious, I, I, I hope. <laughs> kind of know where I'm going here. Let's get this sorted out so we can use some uh, parts here. So we have five at the top. So just using a line, temptation is just stick it on. Uh, I tend to not like that too much. Uh, this is just my preference. I like to kind of go beyond so I can see where I'm going and have the lines join and then connect them onto this box later. So there's our one, two, three at the top. I want that to be in the middle. So then we just need two more and then lock it to the midpoint. Nice. Drag these guys down. You should be able to get away with pulling them straight on. And that should be able to be knocked onto that top part there, the point that's controlling the rectangle. Now, this is going to be quite tedious, so uh, prepare yourself. Now, I want these all to be equal. I also be able to want to use these midpoints. So let's get these all sorted out here. Um, it's up to you how you want to do this. I like parallels first. So you have to be a little careful. So for example, here it's going too far, it tries to go the other way, pull it into place a little bit. All right, so you can kind of get it going. So that's better. Try parallel again. We're doing, it jumped around there, but it's not bad. It's just not equal. So maybe an equal will do it. Could maybe use these two at the end here. Oh, nice. So that looks good. This side's not ready yet, but we've got this side all sorted. Let's use parallel again. So it's, it's up to you. Uh, it doesn't make much difference to the CAD. I'm going to reuse uh, this one that I'm using most already over here. So use parallel here. Oh, sorry, I already had someone selected. Parallel. 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 Now, let's see if we can move this. 
Should we move any of these guys? No. So because of the parallel working and because of this lock at the top in the middle, it controls the whole box. Nice. Let's put a dimension to this for now. Just and we'll change this later. To mention the right thing. Let's call it ten. So again, where are we? Let's have a look here. Profile. Nope. Layout. Yep. So we're doing this at the end here. Conic curves. Splines are tempting. Um, the temptation is to use a spline. Um, I'm just going to sketch this quite quickly. Uh, we're not going to use this, but I can see if I use a sort of beginning here, I can see where it might go. This isn't so bad. Double click to finish it. And then all of a sudden it starts to become clear what's the problem here. If I show this spline, sorry, construction was toggle on. If I look at the curvature, it is all over the place. Um, once I start dragging these, you'll notice that each spline part controls the next and the surroundings. It's quite hard to get this to uh, act correctly. You have to put a whole bunch of uh, sort of controls on here. And then at the ends, you have a real problem uh, trying to get it easy way. Uh, curves are easier. Uh, arcs can be straightforward. Uh, they come up with their own problems. Um, for something like this, it's actually closer to a conic curve. Now it's a conic curve. If I can click properly here, conic. Sorry, type it away with nothing happened. It's going to try this first one here. So here we are. Snap to the midpoint and try this. Try point five. Sorry, how high is this? So let's have a quick look at its curvature. Oh, it's nice. Like it, it gives a big curvature at the top, gently in the middle here. Uh, that looks fine. What about its height? So let's do a little test here. Dimension this. How do we dimension this? Oh, so first we need a point. Let's put a point here. Lock it in place. To mention that. Ah, it's half the height. To adjust this, 0.75, what does that do? 3.75, so it's 75%. It's controlled by this triangle. So this is what we want. This gives us a chance to also control the height of this guy quite nicely. It's tempting here next to do a pattern. So as yes, pattern, this works. We can do another one in pattern, a pair, or whatever we want. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, except for it creates a series of conic curves that are not necessarily joined well enough for a pattern path, which we need in the, uh, need eventually. So for us, we're not going to pattern this. We'll see some patterning later in the sketch. Unfortunately, we just have to draw the conic curve over and over. So, yes, conic curve. Um, sorry, while we're on it, to get this on and off. If I search for it, I can exit and then put it back. There it is. So I'll pick that. Uh, as usual, you want to work your way from left to right first and then pick the conic curve and type its degree, enter. Redo, it's at the top there. So I'll just work my way across here. Snapping, so we get one edge. Oh, forgot to do it. There we go. 
trying to create relationships as I go. Kind of looks like it's gone, but then it disappears. It's kind of strange. Not sure what's going on there. Works fine though if you just do it manually. So going from midpoint to midpoint, giving all of them 50% degree. There it is. Nice. Now, it's not, it doesn't double click to give us the whole thing because it wants to edit the conic curve. Um, it has parameter. Let's see if they're in there. This is our wave profile. There they are. So if you wanted, you could, for example, make these all the same uh, and have them all drive each other. There's no problem there. We're just going to leave it as is. They're all 50%. Uh, this would allow you to, for example, shift them with an equation if you wanted, like so have it small at the back, bigger in the middle. Uh, you could set up a condition that would do that. For us, and because of the way they make these blades, it just runs through like a kind of a gear looking thing. So these should all be the same. Finish the sketch. Let's, that's our new sketch. Let's put all the way to the end of the history. Now, how do we get the thickness and the wave? So let's turn our wave profile dimensions on. So remember it's 10. We don't want 10. Uh, let's see here, I believe we want one. Let me just measure something here. Actually, let me show this. It is one, sorry about that. A lot of numbers in my head here. So this is not 10, it's one. That looks good. We can adjust this at our leisure here. Uh, so we can set it up now, so make sure it works and then try some other options. First thing is though, figure out which one's which here again. So let's hide the components, show the bodies. So it's body two for me. And I'm gonna extend this. So over to surfacing. Uh, it's a loft that we are after, surface loft. So you can see here, we've got a bunch of stuff. So let's, if you want, you can chain the selection. Oh no, that gives you the whole thing. So that's not right. So let's not chain. So. This is profile one. And if it's if it's all one edge, it usually understands that it's all one connection. Let's add a profile, which is this guy. And these conic curves are joined. I can see what's going on here. <laughs> nice. Hold on. Something not right. Making sure I missed one, I think. Carefully. Just making sure I only have two profiles, sorry. I think I missed one in the middle before. There we go. Just looking at this from the right. Now, right now it's coming out as a cone looking thing from the side or a triangle. So I don't want it to be connected. I want it to be tangent. Ooh, strange. So what does it do? It kind of makes a swoopy, strange shape here. This is not ideal, right? I don't want it to be like this. So instead of just connected, because right now it's just saying, well, it, it's joining. Uh, we want to change it to direction. Perfect. Uh, if you want, you can adjust this connect this connection or direction, sorry, by adjusting this length. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, 
but if you want to follow along, and well, I suppose it's not up to you, it's up to me. <laughs> I'm going to go for one. Uh, if I can see it, where are we here? For some reason it shouldn't take off weight separately as a percentage, so 0 0.1. No, 0 0.1. There we go. That's what I want. So 0.1 in the takeoff weight. Takeoff angle zero uh, and all that sort of stuff. And you have no choice but a new body here. We are doing this up at the top level. We're going to probably shift this back in history here. So let's see if it works. Looks good. I'm going to rearrange this in history, move it to just behind. No. Okay, pain in the ass. Roll history here, do it again. It's not a bad thing. Before I do this, let's make this a little bigger so we can see it, five. So, easier to pick. Let's try again. Add one. So we get quite a ripple there. So let's change this again, just as almost a review here. It should be tangent. And I want this to be directional. I'm gonna change it to 0.1. Nice, new body. It's in the right spot now. If I want, have a look here, adjust this guy to what I need it to be, one. Everything looks good. Nice. Now let's go to the end of history. Wait, and we see, oh, we don't have this yet. So the problem is I'm gonna do this wrong first. What's component what? So that's our components, call that the, uh, what was I calling that? The, hold on, I forget. The holder and the blade. So let's call that the holder. Blade. Nice. Let's go ahead here and figure out where the blade is. It's not that guy. There it is. So, oh, we've got two things here. We need to join those together. Let's stitch them. Pick the big uh, main body first. Pick it out of the tree. In the browser, that looks good. Green is green is go for this stuff. Uh, tolerances are met. And you can make a new body, new component. That's fine. Put it into place. So I just dragged it to the back there. And now we can fix our blade. So what's going on? We can, uh, it doesn't make sense. No, that's not right. So we have to do the split first. So let's add the split. Nice. Oh, hold on. When we get this ripple, it doesn't know what to do. Uh, right now it's split with surface. Well, it, this ripple's screwing that up. What we have to do is actually change to a long vector. So projection, you can pick any any direction. Uh, like for example, this is my Z axis. Try that. Nice. So looks good. Screwed this up. That's okay. So that's not what we want. It's this pair. Hold down command or control to get that. Let's 
Just make sure everything looks right. Nice. It was a lot of work, but that's quite a good result. So let's just tidy things up here. And this is where we'll stop this video. The next step is to go ahead and start sketching a tooth profile and eventually put a mount hole in the holder here. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do here, I don't like this color, it's too close to the overall so, uh, or screen, sorry. Let's see if I can make it smaller. Change the color cycle. Blue, yeah. Darker blue. Oh, red, even worse. Purpley. Uh, while we're doing this, uh, why are they doing this? Why can't you pick? Uh, it turns out that these colors all go together and are visible to for people with uh, color blindness, various other things. They also show up uh, as a, they're kind of a set of colors that go together. They show up on almost any monitor correctly. So this is why we can't really pick very well. Although it would be nice to be able to put them their list, but whatever, get what we get. That's the end of this video, uh, getting set up for a tooth pattern, which is coming next, and the holder mount hole. Thanks for watching. And over to you.